everyone. Greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Nish Kumar Singh and you're watching ISTQB Foundation series. Uh, we are still in chapter 4 and this is the last topic of this particular chapter and uh, the technique as well from the experience based test technique. We have almost covered everything here just looking at the new technique which is added in the 2018 syllabus which is called as checklist based testing. It's from one of the type of the experience based techniques, so let's know more about it. So when you talk about checklist based testing is generally based on a checklist which you generally create as a part of test analysis. So while you are going through the analyzing the test basis or going through the requirements design or certain things, you create a questionnaire which generally helps you to determine certain questions to be answered when you interact with the application. It can also be listed on certain tasks or maybe acceptance criteria in terms of agile agile methodology or so on. So uh, we actually have a document here which will be specially created in terms of answering the requirements or maybe answering certain questions about a particular entity. So it might be listed as a part of you know test condition. So generally when you create a test condition, uh, answering those uh, condition or fulfilling them, you generally create a checklist. So this is another way of uh, doing experience-based techniques where uh, maybe the requirements would not be clearly defined, then you create another document which would address the requirements in more detail and uh, you have a good understanding of the uh, the domain which you are testing in. So it, 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 as a part of it, generally, you know, you create, again, high-level test cases for checklist-based testing where uh, the source of information would be your checklist which could be uh, might be you know initially prepared in earlier times of uh, previous projects or maybe sometime you know you can also modify depending on the new type of application which you're testing so it would be a standard uh, document which you would have created uh, depending on the product type which you generally test and uh, you can recall those checklists to be used in any upcoming test and so on but sometime if you think that the product is having a new input or a new uh, entity to be cross-checked as a part of testing, then checklists are allowed to be updated depending on the requirements. So generally, it acts like a source of information for you or which would become like a base for testing. And following this checklist, you would uh, make create a dynamic test cases at the high level and execute them. While you execute, you also work on the application and then update your checklist with the answers stating that what exactly was the outcome of the testing. So it would be uh, you know, documented in terms of high level where you can give the uh, uh, in outcomes of the execution which could be logged and could be used for measuring the coverage. Of course, uh, keeping the same point in context that experience-based techniques are helpful to add more coverage to the executions and testing over the formal techniques or in case uh, when it comes to uh, no formal inputs like test spaces where you talk about requirements, uh, detailed requirements or structure or the code which could be easy to refer, then you generally go with high experience based techniques which would help you to add more value to uh, find different effects than the usual formal techniques. So of course checklists altogether helps you to create a unique set of uh, execution process and allows you to find different effects than the formal techniques. And uh, generally you will be expecting a basic question from here which would not be more difficult to understand but of course would help you to at least answer the things so maybe you can expect a checklist given to you and you will be asked to check for any kind of uh, you know flaw or you know input on that so that's all from here team uh, i think this is what we had on the, from the last topic on the chapter four we'll be looking up uh, with another set of sample questions from the theoretical aspects of different techniques in the upcoming tutorial so stay tuned for that and other than that we'll be moving to chapter 5 which is, has a lot of topics to be covered as a part of it and uh, then we have one more chapter to go chapter 6 so in case you're not subscribed to the channel please subscribe to the channel which will help you to get notified on the latest tutorials on my uh, channel as well as it will help you to understand about the technological needs and the basic uh, certification point of view. So in case you have any query, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to assist you at any point of time. So thanks for watching the video. Take care. Keep learning. Happy learning.